Hey gang, you know who, back again. So, uh, before we get started, why don't you reach on down and pop that subscribe button so you don't miss a single adventure or blooper or whatever I happen to create at that given moment. Poor man here, with you once again. Thanks for tuning in. You know one of the great things about my job? People send me stuff and say, here, try this, try that, try this, and do a show about it. And that's a wonderful thing. Nothing better than cool free stuff. Love it. Comes with a caveat though. I tell them, as long as you know that I'm gonna tell it the way I see it. So, as long as they're willing to abide by the one rule I have, we're good to go. Today's cool free stuff. My friends over at Awesome Broso Tequila have sent me a bottle of their Blanca Tequila. Looks like it's a cool bottle and looks good, and it's somewhere, I believe, in the $70 to $80 range, which puts it in a you know, good, good to, pretty good to good tequila range in terms of the price. And so today, we are gonna do a test drive. Now, when you go to a Mexican restaurant, I don't know how you do your judging, but here's how I do it. First thing you check, obviously, the chips and salsa. How good are they, okay? Then we move on to the guac. How's the guacamole? And then finally, we move on to one of the entrees. Normally, if they have it, I will check out their carne asada to see uh, and gauge how good that restaurant is, in my humble opinion. The test of tequila is, I'm gonna try a shot, and then we are going to mix it. I have created a drink just for this occasion. Now, for the most part, there's three kinds of tequila. There's Blanco, which is not aged, literally fresh. It is right out of the distiller. This is kind of how you measure a distiller and how good they are because there's just, that is it. Just the tequila straight out. There's no aging, no oak flavors. The next one is called Reposado, and that is anywhere from generally two to 12 months aged in an oak barrel. And this is a good tequila for you to put in a margarita. It'll have some oaky flavors and just, it, you know, it's a little more mellow. It takes some of the edge off. And finally, there's Añejo. And that is aged anywhere from two years to, you know, two to five years is normal, but some go more than that. Uh, there's a couple other types of tequilas, but these are the three basic ones that you're gonna encounter on your everyday. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna open our little bundle of joy, yay. Poor man does love cool free stuff. Asombroso, they are out of Southern California. So, have not visited their place yet. Chances are, we'll probably do a show from there at some point. First things first, straight out of the bottle. Try a little tasty, what do you say? And no, we're not gonna do live. All right. Awesome Broso Blanca Tequila. Smells good. Very smooth. Very good. Good job, boys. So now, now we're gonna get to get we're gonna get down to business. Today's drink I created just for this occasion. Ooh, ah, nice and warm. Is called the tequila melon popper. I'm gonna show you how to make it, all the ingredients, and as always, take my recipe. If, if you like it one way or another, add more, add less, whatever you like. But this is my recipe, how I did it on this very day. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to add two, count them, two ounces. Let me take this, let me take this bad boy out of here. Don't need that just yet. We're gonna take two ounces of our Asombroso Blanca Tequila, okay? Mmm. Then, we're gonna take one ounce of orange liqueur. Now, I will tell you that for me, I would prefer a liqueur more like uh, Grand Imperial or Grand Marnier in this, as opposed to Cointreau, which is a little, uh, a little different, but either one, uh, again, season to taste for yourself. So we're gonna do one ounce of our orange liqueur. 
We're going to put it in our shaker. All right, now we're moving on. We're going to take one ounce of sweet and sour. So you're saying to yourself, hmm, so far, basically, all we've got here is a margarita. That is true. But you see this watermelon sitting right over here? What I have in my little refrigerator right here offset is freshly, I can't call it squeezed, but freshly ground. I literally took a watermelon and I put it into the grinder. I've got a, a Ninja that I just love because it does pretty much everything any way that you want it to do it. And I just ground it up. So literally, this is freshly ground seeds and everything. Uh, the thing about watermelon is, you know, you never know what you're gonna get. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, and hmm, sometimes they're in between. This one's not so bad. So we're gonna do two ounces of watermelon, and we may do a little bit more, we'll see. But for the time being, two ounces of watermelon should do, okay? Now, we're also gonna do about, about half an ounce of our lime juice, okay? So now, really, basically what we've got is a, water, a watermelon margarita. Ah, but wait, friends. Your, your pal, the poor man, he's not done yet. Perhaps you've noticed these peppers over here. Well, my friend, now you know why we have the mulcher. So we're gonna take that, and here's the other thing. Like watermelon, with jalapenos, these are jalapenos, you never know exactly what you're gonna get. So some are tasty and mild, some are tasty and hot, and some are just plain fire. My suggestion to you, taste it first and see how hot it is, and then, at that point, you can gauge whether that's the pepper for your drink. Just mulch those bad boys up in there, okay? Get the, what we're trying to do is expel all those pepper flavors in there. And the dangerous thing about this, especially on a hot summer day, is you've got a nice refreshing drink that's made with watermelon, and then you're adding pepper to it, which is really gonna only make you more thirsty, which it means you're gonna be making more of these, and then drinking more and making more, and consequently. While poor man was in the laboratory inventing this little gem, it did not come without some drama, a little bit of a disaster. So there, I don't know if you can see, I'll turn the angle, I can't see in the weather or not, but all that mess on there, I'll show you. I uh, made the rookie bartender mistake of, I was messing around in the kitchen, and I went and I went to shake, much like I had to stir the juice, it was still in its little container, but I had not secured the container. And I started to shake that, and watermelon juice went everywhere. On the linen chairs, sitting in our bar, uh, on walls, floors. That was, it, it was an epic poor man hazmat cleanup, I'm here to tell you. All right, so now we've got all this. I'm gonna take, add a little bit of ice, a little bit of wet shake here summertime drink, so you want it kind of cold. Add a little bit of ice there. There you go, dog. Just for you. I have my little assistant off screen who's uh, basically helping me clean stuff up. And now, just shake for a little while. And one more. And we're getting there. It's actually a pretty easy drink to make once you have all the ingredients out, out and about. And then we just take our tiny little Hawthorne strainer, strain that bad boy right into. Now, you can also use a strainer and strain out any of the particles. Personally, doesn't bother me all that much. And now, all we do is we garnish. Boom. Boom. And a couple little peppers on top. Boom. Boom. How beautiful is that? 
Look at that. Hold on. I, I've got to give you a closer look at that. Is that beautiful or what? Huh? That is the tequila melon popper from your pal, the poor man. Now, I can't send you down the road without checking it out first. Here we go. Oh, man, I like it. And hopefully you will too. I wanna to thank my friends over at Asombroso Tequila for sending me this delightful bottle of tequila. It's very good. So I do recommend it. It's, it's smooth. And for a Blanco, sometimes they come out a little harsh, a little warm going down, but good, very good. To get the recipe, all you do, you know this, you go to poormanmike.com and if you press this button right over here, then you will instantly become a poor minion, which gets you head of the line speed pass for each and every new poor man episode and all that other cool stuff. So till next time, pour well, pour often, poor man, and we will see you by the pool.